centaurs. The centaurs are icy comet-like bodies whose orbits have semi-major axes greater than Jupiter's, 5.5 astronomical units, 820 million kilometers, 510 million miles, and less than Neptune's, 30 astronomical units, 4.5 billion kilometers, 2.8 billion miles. The largest known centaur, 10,199 Characlo, has a diameter of about 250 kilometers, 160 miles. The first centaur discovered, 2060 Chiron, has also been classified as a comet, 95P, because it develops a coma just as comets do when they approach the Sun. Comet Hale Bopp seen in 1997. Comets are small solar system bodies, typically only a few kilometers across, composed largely of volatile ices. They have highly eccentric orbits, generally a perihelion within the orbits of the inner planets and an aphelion far beyond Pluto. When a comet enters the inner solar system, its proximity to the Sun causes its icy surface to sublimate and ionize, creating a coma, a long tail of gas and dust often visible to the naked eye. Short-period comets have orbits lasting less than 200 years. Long-period comets have orbits lasting thousands of years. Short-period comets are thought to originate in the Kuiper belt, whereas long-period comets, such as hale bopp are thought to originate in the Oort cloud. Many comet groups, such as the Kreutz Sungrazers, formed from the breakup of a single parent. Some comets with hyperbolic orbits may originate outside the solar system, but determining their precise orbits is difficult. Old comets whose volatiles have mostly been driven out by solar warming are often categorized as asteroids. Distribution and size of transneptunian objects Size comparison of some large TNOs with Earth, Pluto and its moons, Eris, Makemake, Haumea, Sedna, Gonggong, Quayor, Orcus, Silesia, and 2002 MS4. Inside the orbit of Neptune is the planetary region of the solar system. Beyond the orbit of Neptune lies the area of the transneptunian region, with the donut-shaped Kuiper belt, home of Pluto and several other dwarf planets, and an overlapping disk of scattered objects, which is tilted toward the plane of the solar system and reaches much further out than the Kuiper belt. The entire region is still largely unexplored. It appears to consist overwhelmingly of many thousands of small worlds, the largest having a diameter only a fifth that of Earth and a mass far smaller than that of the Moon, composed mainly of rock and ice. This region is sometimes described as the third zone of the solar system, enclosing the inner and the outer solar system. Kuiper Belt The Kuiper Belt is a great ring of debris similar to the asteroid belt, but consisting mainly of objects composed primarily of ice. It extends between 30 and 50 astronomical units, 4.5 and 7.5 billion kilometers, 2.8 and 4.6 billion miles, from the Sun. It is composed mainly of small solar system bodies, although the largest few are probably large enough to be dwarf planets. There are estimated to be over 100,000 Kuiper Belt objects with a diameter greater than 50 kilometers, 30 miles, but the total mass of the Kuiper Belt is thought to be only a tenth or even a hundredth the mass of Earth. Many Kuiper Belt objects have multiple satellites, and most have orbits that take them outside the plane of the ecliptic. The Kuiper Belt can be roughly divided into the classical belt and the resonant transneptunian objects. The latter have orbits whose periods are in a simple ratio to that of Neptune. For example, 
going around the sun twice for every three times that Neptune does, or once for every two. The classical belt consists of objects having no resonance with Neptune, and extends from roughly 39.4 to 47.7 astronomical units, 5.89 to 7.14 billion kilometers, 3.66 to 4.43 billion miles. Members of the classical Kuiper belt are sometimes called Cubawanos, after the first of their kind to be discovered, originally designated 1992 QB1, they are still in near-primordial, low-eccentricity orbits. Pluto and Charon The dwarf planet Pluto, with an average orbit of 39 astronomical units, 5.8 billion kilometers, 3.6 billion miles, from the Sun, is the largest known object in the Kuiper belt. When discovered in 1930, it was considered to be the ninth planet, this changed in 2006 with the adoption of a formal definition of planet. Pluto has a relatively eccentric orbit inclined 17 degrees to the ecliptic plane and ranging from 29.7 astronomical units, 4.44 billion kilometers, 2.76 billion miles, from the Sun at perihelion, within the orbit of Neptune, to 49.50, 7.41 billion kilometers, 4.60 billion miles, at aphelion. Pluto has a 2 to 3 resonance with Neptune, meaning that Pluto orbits twice round the Sun for every three Neptunian orbits. Kuiper belt objects whose orbits share this resonance are called Plutinos. Charon, the largest of Pluto's moons, is sometimes described as part of a binary system with Pluto, as the two bodies orbit a barry center of gravity above their surfaces, i.e., they appear to orbit each other. Beyond Charon, four much smaller moons, Styx, Nix, Kerberos, and Hydra, orbit Pluto. Others. Besides Pluto, astronomers generally agree that at least four other Kuiper belt objects are dwarf planets, and additional bodies have also been proposed. Makemake, 45.79 astronomical units average from the Sun, although smaller than Pluto, is the largest known object in the classical Kuiper belt, that is, a Kuiper belt object not in a confirmed resonance with Neptune. Makemake is the brightest object in the Kuiper belt after Pluto. Discovered in 2005, it was officially named in 2009. Its orbit is far more inclined than Pluto's, at 29 degrees. It has one known moon. Haumea, 43.13 astronomical units average from the Sun, is in an orbit similar to Makemake, except that it is in a temporary 712 orbital resonance with Neptune. Like Makemake, it was discovered in 2005. It has two known moons, Hayaka and Namaka, and rotates so quickly, once every 3.9 hours, that it is stretched into an ellipsoid. Quayor, 43.69 astronomical units average from the Sun, is the second largest known object in the classical Kuiper belt, after Makemake. Its orbit is significantly less eccentric and inclined than those of Makemake or Haumea. It has one known moon, Wayward. Orcus, 39.40 astronomical units average from the Sun, is in the same 2 to 3 orbital resonance with Neptune as Pluto, and is the largest such object after Pluto itself. Its eccentricity and inclination are similar to Pluto's, but its perihelion lies about 120 degrees from that of Pluto. Thus, the phase of Orcus's orbit is opposite to Pluto's, Orcus is at aphelion, most recently in 2019, around when Pluto is at perihelion, most recently in 1989, and vice versa. For this reason, it has been called the anti-Pluto. It has one known moon, Banff. Scattered disk.
the scattered disk object Sedna and its orbit within the solar system. The scattered disk which overlaps the Kuiper belt but extends out to near 500 astronomical units, is thought to be the source of short-period comets. Scattered disk objects are believed to have been perturbed into erratic orbits by the gravitational influence of Neptune's early outward migration. Most scattered disk objects SDOs, have perihelia within the Kuiper belt but aphelia far beyond it, to more than 150 astronomical units from the Sun. SDO's orbits can also be inclined up to 46.8 degrees from the ecliptic plane. Some astronomers consider the scattered disk to be merely another region of the Kuiper belt and describe scattered disk objects as scattered Kuiper belt objects. Some astronomers also classify centaurs as inward scattered Kuiper belt objects along with the outward scattered residents of the scattered disk. Eris and Gong Gong Eris, 67.78 astronomical units average from the Sun, is the largest known scattered disk object and caused a debate about what constitutes a planet because it is 25% more massive than Pluto and about the same diameter. It is the most massive of the known dwarf planets. It has one known moon, Dysnomia. Like Pluto, its orbit is highly eccentric, with a perihelion of 38.2 astronomical units, roughly Pluto's distance from the Sun, and an aphelion of 97.6 astronomical units, and steeply inclined to the ecliptic plane at an angle of 44 degrees. Gong Gong, 67.38 astronomical units average from the Sun, is in a comparable orbit to Eris, except that it is in a 310 resonance with Neptune. It has one known moon, Cielu. Farthest regions The point at which the solar system ends and interstellar space begins is not precisely defined because its outer boundaries are shaped by two forces, the solar wind and the sun's gravity. The limit of the solar wind's influence is roughly four times Pluto's distance from the sun. This heliopause, the outer boundary of the heliosphere, is considered the beginning of the interstellar medium. The Sun's hill sphere, the effective range of its gravitational dominance, is thought to extend up to a thousand times farther and encompasses the hypothetical or cloud. Edge of the heliosphere Artistic depiction of the solar system's heliosphere The Sun's stellar wind bubble, the heliosphere, a region of space dominated by the Sun, has its boundary at the termination shock, which is roughly 80 to 100 astronomical units from the Sun upwind of the interstellar medium and roughly 200 astronomical units from the Sun downwind. Here the solar wind collides with the interstellar medium and dramatically slows, condenses and becomes more turbulent, forming a great oval structure known as the Helios Heath. This structure has been theorized to look and behave very much like a comet's tail, extending outward for a further 40 astronomical units on the upwind side, but tailing many times that distance downwind. Evidence from the Cassini and Interstellar Boundary Explorer spacecraft has suggested that it is forced into a bubble shape by the constraining action of the interstellar magnetic field, but the actual shape remains unknown. The outer boundary of the heliosphere, the heliopause, is the point at which the solar wind finally terminates and is the beginning of interstellar space. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 passed the termination shock and entered the Helios Heath at 94 and 84 astronomical units from the Sun, respectively. Voyager 1 was reported to have crossed the heliopause in August 2012, and Voyager 2 in December 2018.
The shape and form of the outer edge of the heliosphere is likely affected by the fluid dynamics of interactions with the interstellar medium as well as solar magnetic fields prevailing to the south, e.g. it is bluntly shaped with the northern hemisphere extending nine astronomical units farther than the southern hemisphere. Beyond the heliopause, at around 230 astronomical units, lies the bow shock, a plasma, wake, left by the Sun as it travels through the Milky Way. Detached objects. Sedna, with an average orbit of 520 astronomical units from the Sun, is a large, reddish object with a gigantic, highly elliptical orbit that takes it from about 76 astronomical units at perihelion to 940 astronomical units at aphelion and takes 11,400 years to complete. Mike Brown, who discovered the object in 2003, asserts that it cannot be part of the scattered disk or the Kuiper belt because its perihelion is too distant to have been affected by Neptune's migration. He and other astronomers consider it to be the first in an entirely new population, sometimes termed Distant Detached Objects DDOs, which also may include the object 2000 County Route 105, which has a perihelion of 45 astronomical units, an aphelion of 415 astronomical units, and an orbital period of 3420 years. Brown terms this population the inner orb cloud, because it may have formed through a similar process although it is far closer to the Sun. Sedna is very likely a dwarf planet, though its shape has yet to be determined. The second unequivocally detached object, with a perihelion farther than Sedna's at roughly 81 astronomical units, is 2012 VP113, discovered in 2012. Its aphelion is only about half that of Sedna's, at 458 astronomical units. Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is a hypothetical spherical cloud of up to a trillion icy objects that is thought to be the source for all long period comets and to surround the solar system at roughly 50,000 astronomical units, around one light year, lie, from the Sun, and possibly to as far as 100,000 astronomical units, 1.87 light years. It is thought to be composed of comets that were ejected from the inner solar system by gravitational interactions with the outer planets. Oort cloud objects move very slowly, and can be perturbed by infrequent events, such as collisions, the gravitational effects of a passing star, or the galactic tide, the tidal force exerted by the Milky Way. Boundaries Much of the solar system is still unknown. The Sun's gravitational field is estimated to dominate the gravitational forces of surrounding stars out to about two light years, 125,000 astronomical units. Lower estimates for the radius of the Oort cloud, by contrast, do not place it farther than 50,000 astronomical units. Most of the mass is orbiting in the region between 3,000 and 100,000 astronomical units. Despite discoveries such as Sedna, the region between the Kuiper belt and the Oort cloud, an area tens of thousands of O in radius, is still virtually unmapped. Learning about this region of space is difficult, because it depends upon inferences from those few objects whose orbits happen to be perturbed such that they fall closer to the Sun, and even then, detecting these objects has often been possible only when they happen to become bright enough to register as comets. Objects may yet be discovered in the solar system's uncharted regions. The furthest known objects, such as Comet West, have aphelia around 70,000 astronomical units from the Sun. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe.